It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a teaching tutorial Thursday featuring Greg Cosell from NFL Films, the NFL Matchup Guru, and it is presented as always by DraftKings, America's number one rated sports book app, and of course, the number one place to play DFS. Can't believe it's already Thursday, which means it's already week 14, which means we already have a good game tonight, Patriots and Rams, which means tomorrow I will name a spread the word winner, and all you have to do is retweet any post from me at Ross Tucker NFL or our official show handle at Ross Tucker Pod. That's about any of our shows. Just retweet it or like it on Twitter or like it or comment on Instagram or like it or comment on Facebook. It's that easy. That easy to be a winner. And I love giving out winners on Friday. It's a winner's Friday tomorrow. Sponsor confirmation, email winner. We've had so many good ones. Today, Simply Safe, trust me, you will love knowing that no one's been in your house. Just trust me. And that you have that video camera that comes with it, as well as ritual vitamins. We got a lot of good, 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 good holiday gifts. YouTube shout out tomorrow as well. That might even be the easiest contest. You just comment on any of our YouTube pages at youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, any of our YouTube posts, I suppose. Today's patron of the day. Brian Burgos, they keep coming. I thought we were going to be done two days in a row. Somebody has stepped up to become a patron, join the Tuckhead family. I love it. Brian Burgos, patreon.com slash RT Media. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. So every week here on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, we have the privilege, the honor, <laughs> to talk with the esteemed <clears throat> Greg Cosell, whom you should follow on Twitter, at Greg Cosell, the NFL matchup guru, NFL films guru. He puts in the time. He watches the tape. For 40 years, he's done this. And we need people like Greg. He is a subject matter expert, which <laughs> is what we are looking for. It's what we like. All right, Greg, I think we got to start with tonight's game. I mean, it's a pretty intriguing matchup, kind of a rematch of the Super Bowl a couple years ago, but it's the New England Patriots and the L.A. Rams, all kinds of different storylines and things we can get into. What jumps out to you about tonight's game? You know, it's funny you say that because obviously a lot of people are saying, hey, what did Bill Belichick do in the Super Bowl because he held the Rams to three points? And I think that the Rams are a different offense right now. And I think that's what fascinates me about this game. Because the year the Rams got to the Super Bowl, Ross, they were really built. And it all started with the run game. That was when Todd Gurley was still in his prime. And Bill Belichick structured his defense in the Super Bowl to take away that outside zone run and all the crossing routes that follow from that. So if I remember correctly, he played a lot of what we call cover four. So you had the two safeties sitting right there to take away the in-breaking routes. Now the Rams still run in-breaking routes. Obviously, that's part of Sean McVay's foundational uh, approach with his concepts. But to me, the Rams are no longer an offense that are purely built on the run game. They throw the ball an awful lot by choice. If you look at the number of, of attempts with Jared Goff, they are very high. And the other thing that stands out watching the Rams offense is how many snaps of empty sets they play, which were that was not really a part of what they did the Super Bowl season. They line up in empty sets, I think the third most empty dropbacks in the league behind the Steelers and I believe the Bengals when they had Joe Burrow. Uh, so this is a team that is different offensively than they were in the Super Bowl. And Bill Belichick, again, he's way smarter than I am, Ross, but I don't believe you'll see him do the same thing tactically that he did in that Super Bowl. Got it. All right. That makes sense. Uh, a lot of sense. You know, and watching them, you kind of see that from the Rams, certainly. We also have a lot of other cool matchups I want to get your opinion on. And what's neat about it is it seemed like a lot of the teams or individuals I wanted to ask you about, Greg, and get your read on, like they're playing each other. 
kind of curious <laughs> about the Giants, specifically their defense. Yeah. Kind of curious what's going on with Arizona's offense. Boom. Arizona's offense is playing the Giants defense. You can tell me about both. Well, the Giants defense has become a really fun watch under Patrick Graham. They are really multiple with their personnel packages, with their looks. I mean, they it takes a while to watch their defensive tape, Ross, because you have to see who's out there and what they're doing. They're very um, – uh, a lot of different personnel groups. They move around a lot this week. They had a lot of what we call amoeba fronts where nobody or just one person had their hand in the ground in a three-point stance and everybody else was standing up, moving around before the snap of the ball. As you know, that can make it very difficult for an offensive line to identify the five that they are going to be responsible for. Uh, so your protection has to deal with that in a different way. Um, and then coverage-wise, they're they're very multiple there as well. They don't play a ton of man, but they, they do a lot of disguise and late movement to get to different zone concepts. So this is a real fun defense to watch. They did a really good job last week keeping Russell Wilson in the pocket. They used a spy, a different spy when they were in nickel, dime, and even dollar. Seven defensive backs they play a lot of. I would imagine that just conceptually it'll be similar versus Kyler Murray probably not the exact same because coaches don't do that but similar conceptually and Murray has been very up and down this year Ross I know he's spectacular and we see those plays and think he's great but he's not been very consistent throwing the football and the the run element to his game has sort of that uh, subsided quite a bit over the last number of weeks so so he's a spectacular player a splash player but a very inconsistent player yeah, I've I've kind of noticed that. And and obviously there's a lot of questions and people wondering, Greg, how much that has to do with his health. Because the one thing I've right. noticed is he's definitely not running as much. Yeah. And you're right about that. And we don't know what his health is. Look, you know you played in the league, what, seven years? If you're on the field, your health is irrelevant. You got to perform or, or, you're, or get off the field. I mean, you know, you can't after a game say, gee, I played 60 snaps, but I wasn't really healthy. So, so therefore, it's OK that I missed four blocks. It doesn't work like that in the NFL. You know that if you're out there playing, you're playing. So what Murray is doing now, maybe he can't run as much. But the bottom line is that element or that lack of that element is leading to an inconsistency in his game because he's not there yet as a pocket thrower, even though he throws the ball beautifully, uh, there's many other elements that go into throwing from the pocket and he's not there yet. Talking with Greg Cosell here on the Ross Tucker football podcast. We do it each and every week. Absolutely love getting your breakdowns. I will say this too, just as an aside, just as you were talking about the Giants defense, Leonard Williams is playing as you know what off. Yeah. Blake Martinez, James Bradbury, you know, Dave Gettleman's taking a lot of flack, but he's got a bunch of guys that he brought and, in that are playing really well. And, you know, guys a lot of people probably haven't heard of, Carter Coughlin, who's a seventh-round pick from Minnesota, a guy named Nick Lalos from Dartmouth, Ross. Nick Lalos from Dartmouth, who played about 30 snaps this past week. I love it. I love it. He had an interception against Princeton last year, so I don't love him. <laughs> Not many guys get an interception against Princeton, and then the next year they have an interception against Russell Wilson. Um, but I think that's what happened. He, it was, was it this week or the week before he got that tip interception? Anyway, let's get to the Chiefs and the Dolphins. Uh, a lot there. I mean, a lot yeah. there, Greg, both sides of the ball. I'd like to start with the Chiefs O versus the Dolphins D, if I could, because to me that is absolutely fascinating. The Dolphins are a, are a high-percentage blitz defense, very multiple with their front looks. They like to play a lot of man coverage. Um, they they play cover zero, uh, probably close to 10% of their defensive snaps, which is an absurdly high number, as you know, in the NFL. So the question is, are they going to play that way against the Chiefs? Keep in mind, Brian Flores does have a Bill Belichick background, so he's not one of those guys that's just beholden to, hey, this is how we play no matter what. So, you know, blitz and, and man – you wonder, and I don't have the answer to this, Ross. I'm just saying you wonder if he's going to take that approach against Patrick Mahomes and the speed that the Chiefs put out there because, you know, one or two plays and all of a sudden you have 60-yard touchdowns and that puts you in a little bit of a bind. So 
that side of the ball really fascinates me. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Greg, just hearing you talk. Patrick Graham was in New England with yeah. Belichick. Flores in New England with Belichick. They're both doing a lot of different things defensively. Flores with the cover zero. You mentioned Graham with the amoeba. I remember when New England did that to us in Buffalo. You right. know, when they had the amoeba and Trey Teague, our center, said, just block somebody. Right. <laughs> Well, that's what I said. It makes it really hard to identify pre-snap, you know, what who you're going to block, which five, the O-line, because you know how that works better than I do. But, I mean, you, you know, you can't just – protection, you don't do protection on a whim. You know, you have to have a – there are protection rules. All right, what about Tua? Uh, and what yeah. you saw in the second half going against the Chiefs, D? Yeah, that'll be interesting. You know, I mentioned uh, that the, uh, the Dolphins uh, – play a lot of cover zero, well, the Chiefs play even more. The Chiefs lead the league in, in cover zero snaps. Steve Spagnolo has been very, very aggressive. Now, he certainly can be aggressive because you know what? He knows his offense is going to put up 30-plus every week. So he can be very, very aggressive. Um, Tua is – he's an efficient ball distributor. When you watch Tua, what you see is – Everything comes out, timing, rhythm. When it, when he can't do that, he's not quite as good. He'll make a play here and there, second reaction, but he's not really a, a move around guy in a strict sense. Um, so he he, I thought he looked very very efficient in the second half this week. I think he has a very good feel for the timing and rhythm of, of a pass game. I think that's very natural to him. So that that is what kind of the kind of quarterback that he is. We are talking with Greg Cosell like we do every week on the Ross Tucker football podcast. Greg, Saints and the Eagles. Uh, A lot to get to there. I guess we'll start with the Eagles and Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts, what you saw from both of them, probably most importantly, Hurts. I don't know that you saw anything different from Wentz last week. Yeah, no, and Hurts is the guy now. So let's talk about him. Say, obviously, getting in a game where you're behind and and the game plan is not based on your skill set makes it difficult. He made a couple of good plays. Predominantly, he he would hit his back foot and immediately leave the pocket, and uh, that I would have expected that. I think he'll do more of that this week against a really really good Saints defense. The big question with the Saints defense against Hurts becomes how much man coverage they play. They play a lot of man. They play a lot of two man, uh, which for people, what that means is you have two deep safeties and then man to man across the board. The question is, will the Saints continue to do that against Hurts, who is going to leave the pocket when he doesn't need to? That's what young quarterbacks who can run really well do. They leave the pocket prematurely, but they're capable of making great runs. Even the touchdown Hurts threw last week to Ward that got everybody excited, he left the pocket for no reason whatsoever. He never planted his back foot. There was no pressure, and he just left the pocket, and the result was a good one. And that happens with young quarterbacks who can move. They leave the pocket when they don't need to, but sometimes the result is a good one. Often it's not, and those plays we never see on on highlight shows. So he will leave the pocket, and the Saints need to be prepared for that. On the other side, yeah. Asim Hill. That that felt like his best game as it a was. quarterback, Greg. You know, it's funny. After his first game that he started, which was also against the Falcons, it was a very controlled performance. Sean Payton did a really good job of limiting uh, the route concepts, half field reads, simplifying, which was, by the way, the absolute right thing to do. And people immediately said, well, you can't play like that every week. Well, of course you can't. Sean Payton knows that too, but it was his first start. So you play – you know, you play – to win that game and to have your quarterback get comfortable. I thought this week they added some things, uh, and I thought he threw the ball well. In fact, he threw an 11-yard touchdown to Jared Cook, which I'm sure everybody saw because that's a highlight. It was the exact same play in the high red zone in which Drew Brees hit Jared Cook for a touchdown week eight against Chicago. The exact same play out of the exact same formation. Interesting. All right. So they're giving him more is pretty much the big takeaway. Yep. They're giving him him more and he's doing well with it. Yeah. And you have the run element. And, you know, in today's NFL, uh, that's become a part of the game for, for a good number of quarterbacks. Sunday night football, Greg. It's the Buffalo Bills and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'll be calling that one. Good for you. Wait. And I think there's, man, we got to talk about both offenses here for sure. Josh Allen and what he did Monday night, as well as 
people want to know what's going on with the Steelers, maybe even in particular their run game, but what's yeah. going on with the Steelers in general? Well, if you look at their own line, Ross, they're really having a hard time moving people. So their run game's not effective at all. And so the answer to that in their mind is to throw the ball 50 times by choice, to have Ben Roethlisberger drop back that many times. We can have a debate about whether that is a functional and sustainable offense to ask your quarterback to drop back that many times by choice. But the bottom line is their O-line's not moving anyone and they can't run the ball. Um, on the other side, Josh Allen played the best game of his career Monday night. Thought he made the best throw of his career on Monday night when he hit Gabriel Davis on a dig ball for 22 yards. Um, and he is fun to watch. But you know what's the key to Josh Allen? And it's to me, it's simple. The key to Josh Allen is now ball placement. We knew he could run around. We knew he's a powerful, has a powerful arm. We knew all that. But what we're seeing now is precise ball placement. And you can be great at every other thing as a quarterback, but if you can't put the ball where you want to, then you've got nothing. And right now, his ball placement is so good. And obviously, that was a big concern coming out of Wyoming and through his first two years. And this year, he's really, really improved in that area. And he's he looks terrific. You know, I'm not one of those guys that's going to sit here and say, oh, he's on his way to a Hall of Fame career. I don't talk like that. You know that, Ross. But right now, Josh Allen is throwing the ball really, really well. I, I'm fascinated by him, Greg, because I feel like, you know, we're going to have a lot of draft prospects over the next few years that are big and mobile and have strong arms. No question. You're right. But but won't have a great completion percentage, and I I did not think he would get here. I did not think he would no, get to this point. And and by the way, when I do all my draft work, as you well know, because we talk, um, I'm not one of those guys that says, "Oh, he's going to make it and be great," or he stinks. What I what I do in my evaluation is is I present the pros and cons. And if the cons can be developed over time, then a guy can really develop and be a good player. If they can't, for whatever reason, coaching just the guy can't do it, whatever, then they don't turn out to be a good player. So, But I would never say, uh, you know, when Josh Allen came out, clearly he had accuracy issues coming out. So you point out those accuracy issues, but you don't necessarily say, oh, he can never be any good. You don't know that. You, but you see what the issues are when you watch the tape. Talking with Greg Cosell, wrapping up here on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast Got to ask you about Monday night. It's the Browns. It's the Ravens. It's a huge game. Yeah. And how about those Browns on Sunday, Greg, against the Titans? That was amazing. Well, you know what I loved about that game? And this is what I love about coaches. You know, obviously the Browns are built a certain way, Ross. They run the ball. They work off that. But they looked at the team they were playing, and I love this about Kevin Stefanski in this game. They looked at the Titans, and you know what they saw on tape when the coaches on Monday started grinding on Titans tape? They saw this team can't rush the quarterback, and they've got issues in the secondary. So instead of just saying, oh, we're going to run the ball because that's what we do, they said, you know what? We can attack them with the pass game because the bottom line is if you can't rush the quarterback and you don't cover well, that's a problem in pass defense. So what did they decide to do? They decide to play the opponent that was on their schedule instead of just blindly sticking to a philosophy. So for fantasy people, Nick Chubb was not the guy this week, and it probably disappointed them. But the Browns attacked the opponent they were playing, and they came out throwing the football. Yeah, yeah you can say that again. That was unreal. They, I mean, if Peoples Jones doesn't drop the first touchdown, Baker Mayfield has five touchdown passes, and they're up 42-7 at halftime. Now they're going against Baltimore. Did Baltimore get back to who they are Tuesday night, Greg, or do they just play against yeah. the Cowboys? I mean, I think – well, I think that's what they want to be. I mean, obviously the Cowboys' defense has had issues all season, so I don't know if you're going to run for whatever they ran for, 250, whatever the number was. I don't remember exactly. I don't know if that happens every week, but I think that's right now what they need to be offensively because Lamar Jackson has not been – consistent throwing the ball this year obviously he just missed some time with COVID so he wasn't able to practice uh and obviously he'll practice this week but still it's he hasn't thrown it quite as well <clears throat> I don't think they want him dropping back 35 40 times I think they want their run game to be what it was a year ago it certainly looked that way on Tuesday night I think that's the way they want to play 
Craig, look forward to it every week. Love it every week. Thank you so much for the time. Ross, really appreciate it. Thank you. Not as much as I appreciate you, Greg Cosell. That is amazing. You know what else is amazing? The peace of mind you get when you know that you have a home security system. I don't really like to get into details, but I've had two incidents in my life where the first time was before my parents had a home security system. That changed immediately after our house was broken into. The second time was more recently, unfortunately. Thankfully, we had a home security system and we had a camera. So we were in good shape. That's exactly what Simply Safe has. Simply Safe Home Security is having a huge holiday sale. 40% off any Simply Safe system and a free security camera, which is gigantic. US News and World Report calls it the best home security of 2020. High quality equipment, great camera footage. It's really easy to set up. It takes like 30 minutes. Get 40% off Simply Safe plus a free security camera today by visiting simplysafe.com slash Tucker. Go today. You will be so happy that you did. This deal is this week only. That's simplysafe.com slash Tucker. Simplysafe.com slash Tucker. Tuck Stakes. Morning, Ross. Let's start with some fairly large scheduling news. Cowboys Niners game for week 15 flexed out of Sunday night football in its place. Browns Giants. Right. And uh, a couple different thoughts there, Bri. Number one, this is the only time the Cowboys have ever been flexed out. First time ever the Cowboys have been flexed out, but their performance has merited it. Plus, the Niners aren't very good either. Meanwhile, you got the Browns, we're playing awesome. The Giants, you know, leading a division makes perfect sense. And, Bri, I will be calling that game. So I'd much rather be in New York than, I don't even know where was the game was supposed to be, Dallas or San Francisco, wherever it was. I'd much rather drive two and a half hours than fly. So that is good for your boy. Score one for your boy. But that was the right move anyway. Browns, Giants. What a world, though. Cowboys flexed out. Browns flexed in. That's amazing. Tuck Stakes. The COVID news from yesterday, mainly positive. Steelers running back James Conner, as well as Raven studs Matthew Judon and Mark Andrews, all activated off that list. Right. That's big time for the Ravens. Heading into that game against the Browns Monday night that we were talking about with Greg Cosell, to get Judon to rush opposite Yannick Ngakwe, and then Andrews, who obviously Lamar Jackson has a special connection with. That's big. That sounds, by the way, Brian, well, I don't even get into it. You ever watch any dating show ever? We just didn't really have a connection. I just didn't, I just didn't feel the connection. I just, I just sense that we have a connection. We have a real connection. I've never said that. In fact, I don't think guys say that. But I do think that's what seemingly every woman on The Bachelor, Bachelorette, whatever it is, they always use the word connection. You ever notice that, Brian? I haven't watched it in years, but yes, I do. And it's it's an easy, I don't say it's a crutch, but it's an easy way of getting out of a situation. You don't want to talk about it anymore. No, nah, no connection. Move on. Yeah. But it's also what they say for when, like, it's good. If you either have a connection or you don't have a connection. That's the key, evidently. And James Conner, maybe he helps the Steelers' run game a little bit. Tuck Stakes. On the injury front, Bengals put left tackle Jonah Williams on IR for the second year in a row. And it appears as if Washington running back Antonio Gibson is going to miss some time with his turf toe injury. Well, it's a bummer for both those guys. Two young players that uh, have promising futures. Jonah Williams, now last year he was out for the whole season. This year it looks like he'll probably just miss these last four games. Still not good. He has not been able to stay healthy through his first couple years. And then Antonio Gibson, kudos to the Washington team for still getting it done against Pittsburgh, but they don't have another guy like him. I mean, Barber is just a guy, 
and McKissick's pretty good out of the backfield, but that's a big loss for them. Tux takes. Finally, we got a big game on Thursday night football. I'm just happy that there is Thursday night football this week. Rams, Patriots from SoFi in LA. Yeah, and uh, this will be our DraftKings game of the week, Bry. The Rams are favored by five points. The total is 44 and a half. So they're not really expecting a high scoring game. They are expecting the Rams to be the better team. I got to tell you, we talked about this on the Even Money podcast, which is where we actually talk about betting and pick against the spread. But I've kind of gone back and forth on this. I really have. I don't, I mean, I'm going to pick the Rams to win the game uh, because I just think that they are the better team. I still don't think New England's playing all that great. You know, they played a Chargers team that's kind of a disaster right now. They played a Cardinals team that's not playing great. I find it hard to believe that New England throwing the ball this poorly will actually be able to, to beat the Rams. I think the Rams are good, as, and I've said this a million times, as long as they're not playing the Niners. I think the Rams are good. That said, as far as you know, the whole DraftKings part of it goes, I am a little bit about to sneeze. Do I have another one or no? I don't know, but bless you. Thank you. Do you do what I, I sneeze inside my T-shirt? How do you feel about that, Brian? I like it, especially in this COVID world we're living in. It's very easy to do that and uh, very safe to do that. The problem is when I'm traveling and I got the mask on and I'm on the plane and I got to sneeze, what do you do? You just got to sneeze right into the mask, I guess. Yeah, you're supposed to sneeze into the mask, I guess. I kind of pull it to the side and sneeze into my shirt. I don't want to have a, a whole mask face full of sneeze. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you got to be quick about that. Yeah, well, I'm I'm lightning quick, bro. I'm lightning quick. Anyway, um, you know, I feel like we should have a new podcast that's called Solving the World's Problems. Because that's what we do here. I mean, people come for the football, they think. But really, it's just the knowledge, the life hacks that are dropped that's that's really why they stay. Anyway, um, in terms of DraftKings, on the DFS, for the DFS part of it, I think Cam Newton's always a pretty good option just because of his ability to score touchdowns. I think for the Rams, it feels like Cooper Cup day. You know what I mean? Although Belichick, he hates when receivers like Cooper Cup because he loves them so much tear him up. It'd be very interesting. Very interesting to watch that game tonight. I like the Rams uh, in terms of the betting spread part of it. I've kind of gone back and forth because I don't know. I don't like giving the Patriots that much, that many points. But I think Rams take care of it. I'm going to say 24-17 Rams, something like that. I think it'll be a good game. Most importantly, uh, but I'll go 24-17 Rams take care of business. Really, really important game for both teams. I mean. Rams need this for playoff seeding and all that stuff to cement their spot. Patriots still trying to kind of stay in the mix. So should be a really good game. Uh, speaking of really good, Ritual is the multivitamin reimagined. Ritual is formulated with key nutrients, including vitamin D3, to help fill gaps in the diet. Their fresh-tasting delayed-release capsules are designed to dissolve later in less sensitive areas of the stomach so you can take them with or without food. It makes healthy habits easy. Your multivitamins are delivered to your door every month, free shipping. You know, look, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer personally in a daily multivitamin, and you deserve to know what's in your multivitamin. That's the key. That's why Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash Tucker to start your ritual today. That's ritual.com slash Tucker to start your ritual today. We also, Bri, need to give some shout outs that are in order. These are next level patrons, right? Like anybody can be a patron, be part of the private Slack channel for Tuckheads, patreon.com slash RT Media if you sign up at the Tuckheads level.
But if you sign up at the I think we're done here level, you get a shout out for your business or whatever you want at the end of every Ross Tucker football podcast. Pizza Boy Brewing. Yum. Dynastyfreaks.com. Sportaculture. Truly awesome holiday gift. Steakhousesports.com. Very cool concept. Vision Comics with an X. Another cool holiday gift. Anyway, other than that, we got them all up there. Both episodes of the Fantasy Feast podcast. We've got Even Money, College Draft. Obviously, I'll make all my picks tomorrow with the Survivor picks, the underdogs. We are rolling. Week 14 starts tonight. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.